Hi guys, today we are going to be doing notes on weather and climate. I'm going to go through again how you edit your notes. Some of you have been editing them as a Google Doc and because they were originally a PDF, it's kind of looking funky. So you're going to open the following document on your computer. You're actually going to have to download this um, because it was once a Google Doc. So you're going to click this download button right here and you're going to go one step further and instead of leaving it like this you're going to actually put it into a different viewer it's going to be i'm sorry i'm doing this on the macbook but there will be some dots over here you'll click the dots and it says um, view on computer i believe and then you'll actually be able to put the information into the little boxes like you should so again you don't want to download this as a google document you want to instead download it as a PDF file so you can fill in the form questions like they are already done for you. Okay, so that's how what you're going to do as far as editing goes. I've been having some reports that it's not saving correctly. If you will, just take a screenshot of the document once you finish typing on it and submit that instead of the actual document if it's not saving. Make sure you check your work that you've turned into Canvas to be sure that it is turning in what it's supposed to. Okay, so starting out today, we've, we're done talking, well, we're not done, but we've talked as much as I'd like to about the atmosphere as far as all the different layers. We're going to focus in on what's happening in our trophosphere or the layer that's from about, from the, not about, from the surface of the earth to about nine miles uh, above us, and that is the troposphere. Remember we said that weather only happens in the troposphere. Uh, about 99% of the water vapor is found in the troposphere, so that's where our weather and our clouds are. But today we're going to compare and contrast weather versus climate. They're often words that in a non-scientific setting we use interchangeably, but I'm here to tell you that they're very different, so we need to kind of clear up that misconception that you might have. So we define weather to be the atmospheric condition, including temperature, precipitation, wind, and humidity, in a particular region over a short period of time. So this is like days or weeks. Weather is very short. So I do believe that after this, I'm gonna give you a small activity or you'll see it another day, but it's going to give you a couple different um, conditions, weather predictions or climate. And I want you to identify whether I'm talking about weather or climate for those different time periods. In contrast, our climate is um, the average of the weather in a long region or over a long in a region over a long period of time. So this is 30 years or days or more. So climate is definitely something that we have tracked over time and we've decided like this is probably what's going to happen. It's an average. It's not talking about day-to-day -day stuff. That would be weather. So a famous guy named Water Robert he Hanelin has put this pretty easy and a nice catchy way to say it. Climate is what you expect. Weather is what you get. So again, our climate is what we would expect to see if we moved to a different region, while our weather is what we actually get from day to day. Like today, I'm looking out of the window and it was raining earlier, so that's my weather. It's cloudy. That's my weather condition. But if I were to say generally around November in North Carolina, it is about 60 degrees and we see a lot of precipitation, that would be a climate, not a weather statement. So anytime you make a general statement about over a long period of time about weather conditions, we're typically talking about a climate. So now we're going to go in and kind of, we're going to talk a lot about weather another day, what, ex, what is exactly causing the conditions that we're seeing outside. But today we're going to talk about climate and how we determine it. So there's about five ways we determine climate. The very first one is the latitude of the region that we're talking about. Lower latitudes, aka near the equator, which is zero, receive more energy from the sun. So typically, my lower latitudes are hotter than my higher latitudes, which are colder. So think of the difference between the equator region, so Florida, or actually Florida's not really the equator, the equator is more in Latin America, but Florida is one of our uh, most southern points, so that is closest 
to the equator in the U.S. typically. So think about the conditions in Florida versus the conditions up in Alaska or even the Arctic like we've got right there. We know this. We can generally see this. We talked about this when we were discussing the hydrosphere as well. The closer you are to the equator, typically the hotter or warmer the climate is going to be. Though that is not always true because there are four other things that play a part in the determination of climate. So this was the first one. Test your knowledge, true or false, considering just latitude, Canada would have a much warmer climate than Mexico. If you've tested your knowledge, you will know that this is false. Canada will actually have a cooler climate than Mexico because Canada is up here, Mexico is down here, Mexico is closer to the equator. We just said the closer you are to the equator, the warmer your climate typically is. Number two uh, for climate determination, large bodies of water will play an impact on the climate. You might not realize that, um, though it is affecting you definitely with the ocean being so close to you. Water heats up and cools slower than land. That means areas that near water have a more moderate temperature. So, for example, I used to live in the Great Lakes region of Ohio, and I would have, because I was close to the lake, a warmer climate than, say, my folks in central Ohio, like Columbus. But that body of water, because the specific heat of water is higher than air, that means it takes a lot more energy for the water to be heated up or cooled down. The air, not so much, it's very impacted by the water, the warm water that's moving around. We talked about this when we were discussing the Gulf Stream in our hydrosphere lesson, how the Gulf Stream actually warmed up the climate of the, so Gulf Stream is that warm water current that passes from, um, it goes around into the Gulf of Mexico and passes through or past us in the coastal regions of North Carolina, goes up and towards England. We talked about how that warm current is actually warming the um, British uh, England, Britain, because um, because the warm water is heating up the air right there. If we went by just latitude alone, Britain would be a lot colder than it actually is. And we have the Gulf Stream to thank for warmer, wetter conditions in Britain. Okay, so that's number two. And uh, test your knowledge again, true or false, considering water, or just bodies of water, Kansas would have a much warmer climate than North Carolina. We should know this as false. Kansas will be colder or more sta or less stable. They will have higher highs and lower lows than North Carolina. So this is actually a trick question right here. Our climate in North Carolina is more stable. We have moderate temperatures. So there's not that much of a difference between our summer and our winter as compared to Kansas where they have feet of snow in the winter and nice green 80, 90 degree days in the, win in the summer. So they have an extreme difference between... Um, their winter months and their summer months. Number three, so air currents and ocean currents have an effect on the temperatures. That kind of goes along with our large bodies of water. So our warm currents rise the temp raise the temperatures, cold currents lower the temperatures. We know this just as that warm water current raises the temperature of England, the cold water current that goes past um, Greenland actually makes that area colder than it should be latitude wise as well, so that cold water coming down from the poles will cool the temperatures of the land. Same thing happens with um, our air currents as well, though that is less pronounced than our ocean currents, the effects on climate. Next thing, our land formations are actually going to play a role in our climate as well, changing those conditions. So clouds lose their moisture as they go over mountains. This is called, um, this phenomenon is called, let me make sure I'm telling you right. What a day to not cooperate. So clouds lose their moisture as they go over mountains. On one side it's wet and on one side it's dry. This happens because the prevailing winds carry air towards the mountain range. As the air rises to go up over that land mass, it cools down, and we know that when water or water vapor cools down, we get a um, condensing, so going from water vapor to our liquid, and then eventually precipitation if that condensing gets too heavy 
on one side of the mountain where the wind is hitting the mountain as you can see from my picture there that arrow is the wind movement we have very very wet conditions on the other side because all the water is dropped right there on the opposite side we get very very dry conditions the wind the side of the mountain that gets the rain is called the windward side and the side um, that doesn't get the rain we call actually a rain shadow. So it's a patch of land that has been forced to become a desert because mountain ranges block all the plant growing rainy weather. On one side of the mountain the wet weather system drops rain and snow. On the other side of the mountain the rain shadow side all the precipitation is blocked. So you can predict that the climate right here on this side would be very dry, on this side would be very wet. That's all because of the land formation of the mountain uh, making the air rise, cool, and then fall in forms of liquid water. And our very last one, altitude. So altitude can also determine your climate a little bit. We've talked about this. Altitude is the level that you are above sea level. We're pretty much at sea level right here in Bladen County, but if you were to go towards like Asheville, you would find that you would increase in altitude. The higher you go in altitude, the cooler the conditions are. You can see this uh, phenomenon. That's why mountaintops often have snow on them because it's cold there and the rain doesn't come as rain, comes as snow or sleet. Test your knowledge, true or false, considering the altitude, Grandfather Mountain NC would have a much warmer climate than Southport NC. So a mountain in North Carolina, would it have a warmer or colder climate than a coastal town in North Carolina? It would actually have a much cooler climate because it is higher above sea level than the sea or coastal town. Fantastic, and those are our five um, determining factors of climate. If you have any questions, please email me. Until then, I will see you during our next lecture, which will be to discuss air masses and fronts. Have a great day, guys.